The menu is handled by this knob here. It's like a small joystick. Right, left, up, down, whatever. By pressing it I can enable the menu and so on. There is a learning curve but you will get it faster. For example the other screen had multiple buttons and it was sometimes difficult to know which button to press. So with this knob is easier because it's only one thing you have to take care of. First thing that you can see when you open the menu is this information here which is quite important. So here we have resolution, frequency, DP which means it's on display port, standard means, means the scenario mode, we have multiple scenario modes here. Freezing premium which is uh, can be on and off, now it's on, and HDR, HDR which is off now. So I will show you what you can see when you have HDR off and then I will show it to you with HDR on, yeah? Freezing premium, ah uh, yeah, by the way, I will not go to everything, I don't want to repeat whatever you already know or you can find very easy, yeah. The increase or decrease of the dark part brightness may be beneficial in dark games, like horror ones, yeah, to spot the details in the dark areas. You can adjust it when you are in a bright room and to prevent dark areas from being too hard to see and so on. This is very subjective, it's um, according to everyone's needs, but I cannot pinpoint exact places and location where it's, it can be useful. You'll have to test it according to different aspects of your work and the gameplay yours. Response time. It's a bit difficult to record this with conventional camera. For example, my camera has only 60 FPS and also in slow motion it has 240 FPS but I was still not able to properly record what I'm about to tell you. During my test with test 24 for example, on normal there was black trailing noticeable which indicates significant ghosting of course. On fast the black trail was not totally gone but was reduced. However on fastest I noticed a whitish glowing trail so this means some kind of inverse ghosting or overshot. So based on these observations I believe fast is one millisecond which offers best balance between minimal ghosting and no inverse ghosting, yeah? Fastest is too much, overshot, and normal is too slow. That's it. Crosshair. Well, when you need it, you need it, and if you need it, it's there. However, it's not only on games, it's everywhere. It will sit also on the desktop. You can move it around if you want, but not very far from the, from the center. It's useful when you have games where uh, crosshair is disabled or the weapon or the game doesn't have crosshair and that's pretty much it. Timer. If you set it up at 45 minutes for example the screen will not shut down, nothing will happen, you'll just have a timer on your screen letting you know that it's time to go. Yeah. Ambient light is something which is enabled on the back of the screen. This video is derived from the main video in which I'm presenting this screen, yeah? So if you want to know more about ambient light, I'm detailing it there. However, I have to mention, you do not have any ways to sync it with your PC or your keyboard or whatever RGB you have. When you don't want your game to show you the refresh rate, you enable it and this is something which will be shown when the menu is off, yeah? So let's close the menu. Yeah, refresh rate is here. As soon as I start the menu, refresh rate will disappear. So do not get scared if you see that uh, you are enabling refresh rate and nothing is shown. Everything will be visible when this menu will be gone. Local dimming is a technology used in LED TVs and screens, yeah? To improve picture quality by allowing certain areas of the black to dim while keeping other areas bright. It can be used with or without HDR, however, it brings blooming. You'll have to test it and see for yourself how do you like it. If you watch my main video about this screen, I have done some tests regarding blooming and also I have a, a special video dedicated for testing. If you are curious, watch it. Um, the only thing that I want to mention is changing the values with HDR or without will bring more or less blooming. Yeah. 
let's move now to color. I use it on standard. Probably during the day you can use cool and during the evenings close to the night, during the night you can use warm. You have also user modes in which you can adjust red, green and blue differently. So yeah, you have also this option. Let me see if I choose warm, what will happen to user? No, everything is 50. So uh, I had the impression that if I choose a standard warm and cool, user will change, but not. Input. At this moment, display port is active and automatic input means, for example, my Mac is on type C and this PC on the display port. If I close the PC, the screen will switch automatically to type C. So my recommendation is to use automatic input. Now it's connected to my Mac. Here you can see it is type C. And if I go to the menu here, input is on type C. Now let's let's disconnect. I will disconnect the Mac. Yeah. And yes, it went automatically to display port. Yeah. You see display port here. However, if you are using already one source and connect another, the screen won't switch automatically you will need to do it manually. PIP PBP is not enabled now because FreeSync Premium is on. You have to disable FreeSync Premium for that. PIP means picture in picture and PBP means picture by picture. There are some conditions you need to disable FreeSync Premium and also it works only with 100 Hz and 60 Hz. And there is another thing which doesn't work in this setup, HDR, according to my tests. Now we have picture in picture, macOS connected via USB-C and here we have Windows connected via DisplayPort. You can configure the size, bigger and smaller, location and so on. Now we are in picture by picture, again macOS, Windows, USB-C DisplayPort. The settings, you can find them here in input, PIP, PBP, phone mode. So I've showed you picture in picture, picture by picture. In order to show you phone mode, I will have to connect it to a phone, just a second. Yeah, this is phone mode. Obviously the phone is here. And in this side we have Windows this time. It doesn't look bad, however, the resolution, Windows resolution it doesn't go higher than this one. So yeah, everything is big. Scenario mode is something which is according to your preference. Yeah, I use it on startup, but there is Office, DCI P3, sRGB. sRGB is something I mentioned in the other video. If you want the screen to be according to whatever test they did, their recommendation is to use sRGB. Yeah, whatever. Let's see what else we have. Yeah, settings. In settings, we have obviously language, shortcut keys, one, two, you see, if I close this screen, I have here input and display, shortcut key, key input, yeah. Let's put volume here and to, I do not care about display, I can put input, yeah. So now, if I start the menu, I have volume here, yeah, and I can uh, increase and decrease, sorry. I can increase and decrease the volume, yeah, and input perfect the volume as you can see i have it set to 100 percent because i adjust it through the operating system there are two separate volume controls one on the screen and another one in the operating system the os does not control the screen's volume yeah you have to remember this however if you are connecting some other device like a phone you will have to modify the volume on the screen because the phone's volume won't work and 100% might be too loud. KVM works only if one computer is connected via USB-C and the other via the dedicated USB-B to USB-A cable along with DisplayPort or HDMI in order to see something yeah, on that PC. However, if both PCs use DisplayPort and HDMI, KVM won't function because the USB-B to USB-A cable is connected to one computer. It's not connected to both. You have to switch it manually. Standby charge. This is when you are closing the screen by long pressing this button 
yeah and standby charge means you can connect something on the back of your screen on the USB A ports and you can charge whatever you have DDCCI this is when you have an application for example monitorian on Windows and the monitor control on your Mac yeah you can dim the light volume contrast okay the limitation is based on your software but also based on whatever the screen allows you to do if you are able to modify the rgb on the back of the screen via this let me know i haven't found any software that yet that allows me to modify or to sync the rgb this is osd yeah and with osd position you can move it horizontally vertically whatever reset obviously it will go back to whatever was before no i don't want to do, do. ah okay so i did a mistake if you go to reset and you move the knob on the right side everything will be reset yeah so you have to remember this vertical let me bring it back here yeah obviously information is <laughs> model number current resolution and input source it's very interesting that more information you have here yeah instead of here now HDR is on, as you can see here, HDR on, free seeking premium, standard, whatever, yeah, and dark part brightening is not enabled, this is available only when HDR is off, yeah, and on display we have local dimming which is available, yeah, brightness also is available and whatever you have here is not enabled. Aspect is enabled when free seeking premium is off. Yeah, so I disable FreeSync Premium and Aspect is on Auto. You can have it on 21.9. This is the 1 and 4.3. Uh, well, this is not something that you want, <laughs> obviously. Dynamic Contrast Ratio. If you have it grayed out, remember that you have to go to Scenario Mode and to use something else other than Standard. Look, I switched to sRGB and now I can enable DCR. If you enable DCR, brightness contrast are off, yeah. So that's pretty much it, I'm done with the menu. It's interesting how I was able to record for 25 minutes. Of course the video will be shorter because I'm cutting a lot of mistakes. I do mistakes, I cannot do everything in one shot. Even if I will be able to do everything in one shot, probably I will still cut some parts. That's why I prefer to have a different video about it because on the main video I am speaking about other things regarding this screen and introducing the menu there would bore a lot of people because not many are interested about the menu. You are here because you wanted to know more about the menu, that's why you are here. For sure now I am talking with myself. By the way, if you are still here listening to my nonsense, please write in a comment, I don't know, something like I love the end, yeah? <laughs> That's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. By the way, watch this video. It's the main video about this product, yeah. For example, now I'm testing the temperature, so it's very nice. Watch it.